Cheers everybody, CNC Repairman here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to check out a used Haas CNC machine before purchasing. I bought this one with only seeing a few pictures of it. Let's go ahead and see what I ended up with. I'm gonna edit this video so that it goes by pretty fast. I don't wanna to get too long-winded about any particular thing I find. This is also just a quick inspection. I've got a checklist here that I've made that's specific to Haas machines. You can find this on my website. Some of the first things on my list are the condition of the sheet metal, the keyboard and the buttons, the screen, the windows, the way covers. Let's take a look and make sure the e-stop is out. All three buttons are the reset, press, windows need to be replaced. Replacing the windows is pretty inexpensive and makes the machine look like it's worth a lot more money. Doors are a little bit hard to roll, but they are rolling. I've seen doors that don't roll. Let's go over here. Uh, rubber's not worn off of the keypads here. This keypad looks new. We've got some rusting underneath the pendant, a little bit of rust on the table. Uh, inside, the, sh the paint is still on the sheet metal. I have the head cover off because we're going to be looking in there. Let's go ahead, do a zero return, all axes. That's going to shift the transmission in the first thing. It's going to home Z, then it's going to home X and Y. Let's see what we got. The CRT screen is working. It's not shifted. It's not really hard to read. A little bit burned in, I can see, but other than that, it's all right. Let's go ahead and go to the current commands. Page due here. Look at power on time, cycle start time, and feed cutting time. You can also go to our diagnostics page and page down. Look at our tool changes and run time. This sucker's got 231,000 tool changes. This thing is, I'm about my age. Let's take a closer look at the way covers and jog the axes. Going to start with Z-axis, run it all the way down. I'm also going to watch as I jog it up that the weight covers are not binding or clicking really hard or pulling and then yanking up. Z looks like it's doing okay. Let's go ahead and run Y all the way back. Hey, we got some alarms. This is great. All right, let's take a closer look. Y-axis doesn't look great. We can see here that this is pulled up. Looking down here, I don't see anything where someone has dropped vice handles or tools and smashed it up. So the cover looks all right. That wiper could probably be replaced. But other than that, uh, issues on the front and on the X-axis. I would say to check the condition of the machining lights inside. This one looks awful. Also going to have you go and check the cool unit. Make sure that the programmable coolant unit moves up and down. Looks like mine is working. Sometimes they won't work and it'll just keep homing itself. Also, I want to make note, does the machine have a P-Cool unit? Going to do a quick check of the axis motion. Going to see how the ball screws and the support bearings and the thrust bearings sound. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to G28 each axis by itself. Normally pressing X G28 home is going to send just X home or Z or Y. This particular machine did them all at once. The majority of the newer machines, you can do them individually. Uh, this machine didn't sound great. I'll give it that. Uh, Z sounded kind of gnarly. So did X and Y. There was some white cover binding that I heard. Uh, definitely, if I'm going to be running this at full rapid, making parts every day, I'm going to get tired of hearing that. So probably got a lemon, got an old worn out machine, but it is what it is. Let's take a quick look at the chip auger. Let's make sure the chip auger goes forward. Let's make sure the chip auger stops. Let's make sure also that the chip auger runs in reverse. I want to point out really quick the coolant drain, which is going to be on the left side of the machine. I've seen these completely packed and it took me 15 or 20 minutes to clean it out. So a quick check there is going to give you an idea on some of the maintenance the machine had. I've got this checklist broken down into front of the machine, side of the machine, way covers, rear, tool changer, gearbox, etc. We're going to take a look at the side of the machine here. We can see this window's seen better days. Uh, at least it's still here and there's not holes in it. Uh, we also want to look at the track. This older machine has a metal track. Newer machines have a plastic track that fits in here. And this is blown out at the bottom. You're going to have a hard time holding in the new window. You're going to also want to look at the chip chute. 
Is it here? Is it missing? Are they going to send it? Does the bolt pattern of the chip shoot match the actual chip that you have? Has yours been cut like this, etc.? If you really want to dig into the machine and do an inspection, you're going to need to look underneath the weight covers. You're going to want to look at the screw. Does the screw have any lube? You can rub your hand on like that and you see no lube on it. They could probably have a problem with your lube line, pump, or restrictors are plugged. Also want to look at the rails. Are the rails smashed? Are there roller indents here from where the table has been crashed? Are chips packed inside of these bolt hole covers like this? Is it rusted? Uh, are they packed full of chips or is it clean underneath here? Back to the front of the machine. Let's talk about the spindle and what's underneath the head cover. If you want to pull the head cover off, it's going to really give you a good idea on what's underneath it and the condition of everything. First question to ask is, is the machine a gearbox machine, belt drive machine, or a direct drive machine? If it's a belt drive machine, you want to be sure, can it shift gears and does the transmission work? And I'll show you that in another video. Also, how does the spindle sound? How does the load meter look? Take a look at the customer's tools. How does the taper look inside the tools? If you can see his tools, and some of his tools look like this, that spindle's probably shot. If his tools look clean, it's probably all right. If you have a grip force meter, I'd recommend checking it. It's pretty easy and doesn't take very long. I'm at about a thousand pounds here. For this spindle, that's pretty good. Something else you can also check is to look at the dogs themselves and look at the flange of the spindle. My spindle doesn't look very good here. How does the spindle sound? There are different parameters for different age machines on exactly where the cutoff was, but you're pretty sure 900 and below is gonna be low gear and 1500 and above is gonna be high gear. So here's 500. Sounds pretty good. Something you'll also wanna think of is, is the spindle fan kicking on when I do that? Is the spindle fan turning? Run up there and feel it. I have it unplugged for the video. Let's go ahead and stop the spindle. You can still hear the hydraulic pump running for the gearbox. Let's put this at 2,000. Here at shift gear, running pretty good. Let's go ahead and pick up the speed just a little. Doesn't sound terrible. Another thing that you can do, bring the spindle down. You've got a flashlight handy. Take a look inside here and see what your belts look like. Take a look at everything else. If anything inside here looks new, it's probably been replaced. Everything inside this looks old and worn out. Let's talk about tool changers. If your machine has a tool changer like this, that's an umbrella style. If your machine has a tool changer where this carousel is vertical, that's a side mount tool changer. If you have a side mount tool changer, you're going to want to check the arm, the fingers, look for things that are broken, check the tool change at 25%, check the spindle side, pocket side alignment, z-axis alignment, spindle orientation, arm engagement, and that the tool aligns with the fingers. There's a lot of stuff for a side mount tool changer, as well as this. I'll have another video probably on my site that goes in depth into tool changers. The easiest thing to do is to put it in MDI and hit ATC forward and just watch it tool change. If it goes through that, that means all your switches, all of your solenoids, everything is pretty much working. Let's go ahead and call up a tool. You're going to want to make sure that it can grab a tool out of the tool changer and that it can also get a tool and put it away in the tool changer. I'll have much more specific videos and everything involved in this, but that's basically the general amount. While we're at the front of the machine, let's talk about everything that's underneath the spindle head cover. You got the tool release piston here and the switches. You're going to want to look for chips and nastiness like this. You're going to also want to take a look over here at your coolant hose. It runs from the coolant tank pump in the back, up through the head, the cable track cover, and to here. These things get old, hot, the coolant attacks them, they break down. You're going to want to check the condition of this cable. If it looks nasty and brittle, I'd recommend replacing it before you go too much further. Also take a look at your motor transmission. Make sure that the hydraulic lines, they call them hydraulic lines, they're basically an oil pump that pumps oil through the transmission. Those lines, especially from this age of machine, 
get just aged and they'll crack and then pretty soon all that oil is gonna be flooding down everywhere. And also those are really, really hard to change. We're hanging out up here on top of this machine. This machine is of an old enough style that it had a chain and a weight counterbalance. You're gonna to wanna to look here at the sprockets, make sure that they aren't all worn out, that these chains aren't broken and it's hanging by one chain. You also wanna look inside here, see how much chips and nasty buildup you have. You're also gonna to wanna to look at the encoder itself and you're gonna to wanna to look at the pulleys and the belts. I've got this one off, be careful. Don't pull this off and then try to do a tool change. You're gonna to need to reset orientation but check the condition of the pulleys, the belts, the chains. If the machine is a little newer, it'll have a hydraulic over nitrogen counterbalance system. You also wanna look at this cable track, make sure that it's not shot. You can see here, this should probably be cleaned as well as all the nastiness over the regen resistors. This machine's been used hard and put away dirty. While you're up here, you can also look at the switches and the rollers, motor for the tool change, and also the, your Z-axis linear trucks and the ball screw if you look down inside there. Remember I talked about those hydraulic lines that uh, lubricate the transmission. I can tell this one's been replaced here. There's one that goes from the bottom of the transmission all the way up and around. That's this one here to there. This one is original, I can tell. I would replace this if you're gonna be running this machine in production because this is a big deal. Let's take a look at the back of the machine. Number of things I want you to check for. First one is, does it have a coolant tank? Does it have a coolant pump? Is there coolant in there? Can you run it? Can you make sure it works? Remember I talked about the coolant hose. This one, let's see here. Uh, it's sort of bendable, but pretty much shot. I wouldn't replace that. The other thing we're gonna look for is inside the electrical cabinet and everything that's in there. The other thing below the electrical cabinet, the way lube, the air system, behind that panel is underneath the Y axis. All of those things are gonna be on the chart. Let's go through each one individually. I'm gonna to try to follow this list and not get too crazy. The electrical cabinet. What's the condition of it? I've got the door off right now. Can you write your name in the bottom of it? Is there dust and grime building up on every electrical connector or not? So I would say this one is clean. Does the machine have a battery? The battery is on the outside right now, but normally it's on the inside. Is there a battery board somewhere? Are there any notes on the door when the battery was last changed. Moving on, power supply. This is an old computer power supply. There are a couple different revisions. If it has this one like this, replace it. It doesn't matter, replace it. If it's a newer style, you know it's already been done. Spindle drive, does it have a older Magnatech or a Yaskawa spindle drive? Does it have an older style white or silver Haas classic vector drive or does it have a smart drive? Okay, moving on from there. Servo amps, this machine is a DC machine because of those servo amps. Is this an AC machine? Does it have gold or silver colored amplifiers? I don't wanna bore you too much. Moving on. If it has a DC machine, you're going to want to pull the DC motor wires off and beg the motors to ground. I'll have a video on that. You're gonna also want to look at this. Look, does it have a floppy? Does it have a USB? Yummy, yummy. This one looks pretty nice, actually. You've got your way loop tank, Got a suction filter inside of here. If you take your light and you have a hard time seeing through here, this tank is, looks pretty nasty. I'd recommend dropping the tank, changing all the filters. Uh, we got this is busted here. I can tell there's gonna be a lot of chips inside of here. I can't even really see what's going on here. So just kind of look this over. Well, what do we have in here? I would recommend doing a lot of things, but there's a motor, a ball screw in there. Uh, X and Y motor cables, lube lines that go through there. This needs to be cleaned out and checked. Uh, the X-axis cable that goes through the saddle and rides up and down whenever Y goes back and forth, that cable is probably shot. Just looking at all the chips and coolant that's been in here, I would recommend replacing that to start with. Buying your machine and getting it shipped. You decide, man, I just have to have this machine. I'll figure it out. I can make lots of money with this machine. That's great. A few things I want to go over before buying it and once you've bought it. Machine parameter backup. I'll have a video on this before you leave, before the machine gets taken off from power. Make sure that you get all the settings and you get all the parameters backed up. It's going to be a big help if the battery goes dead while it's transporting. The other thing you're going to want to have is a shipping bracket. Make sure that you can bolt down the spindle to the table to keep things from moving around during shipping. I can't tell you how many machines have showed up smashed because they weren't tied down correctly. 
The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to look at is the counterbalance. If your machine has a chain counterbalance like this, you're gonna to wanna to pull the plugs out, put in boards, put an eye bolt to the top of the chain, and strap it down so that it can't break, fall down, and ruin your Y-axis motor during shipping. The other thing, Cosmoline sealant. I don't care where it's going, if it's across town, customer didn't want me to do it, but it, uh, it rained while it went there. Always spray a sealant oil on all the surfaces that can rust. Strap pendant. You're going to want to push this pendant back, put cardboard foam, wrap the pendant itself with saran wrap, and then strap it because this can move, things can fly around and bounce. Other thing is, bring a box for the leveling pads and for the chip chute. You're going to want to put those inside of the machine in a box. Don't let those get lost. The other thing is the coolant tank. Make sure that the pumps are disconnected and free from the machine. The coolant tank goes with the machine. One last thing is the books. Make sure you get all the books that can come with the machine. They might be black, red, gray, white. I've seen a number of different binders. Get all the books and the documentation, whether it's a Haas or any machine. A big help when you're going to work on it. Well, that pretty much wraps up doing a really quick inspection. If you like this video, please subscribe. If I went too fast or you're a little confused about how to do a lot of the things or you want a video that's way more in depth, please check out my other videos and my store as well on cncrepairman.com. If you want a t-shirt, they're available there. If you need parts for your Haas machine, please check out CNC Replacement Parts. Thanks for watching and please tell your friends.